Rightio, guys. I'm super excited. I've got a fantastic guest joining me on the show today. His name is Ash Belcastro. He is the founder and owner of Engage Fightwear and the founder of Attain Peace Sports Management. Manages the likes of Kakaya France, Brad Riddell, and of course, international superstar and current middleweight champion, Israel Adesanya. Ash, I really appreciate you giving up your time, man. I'm excited to have a chat. Hey, mate. How are you? Yeah. Um, Co-founder of AP Sports with Eugene Behrman. I'll throw that in there just because... don't want to get in trouble from the big fella. But no, I'm not. Huge. How are you, mate? Oh, I'm really good, thanks. Nah. So you're uh, currently calling in from uh, Abu Dhabi, from Yaz Island. So what's the next week ahead, mate? You've got a big week, probably one of the biggest weeks in the brand's history. Um, obviously, you've got all the boys on the fight card this week, well, a lot of them. Um, Brad, Izzy, Kai, uh, and then you've got Shane out there as well. So it's a big yeah. week for City Kickboxing and for Engage. Uh, yeah. Tell us a bit about that, mate. What's, what's the week ahead like for you? Yeah, pretty pretty crazy. Not many hours sleep. Uh, I'm kind of loving it at the moment because I'm in quarantine for 48 hours. I'm 24 hours in. I got in just before the guys and they've just landed. They've all just messaged me. So they've just landed in from uh, Vegas. Um, yeah, like uh, it's been, it's been, the next week ahead is actually going to be uh, pretty intense. You know, um, there's a lot of media and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of, you know, making sure the guys are on weight and uh, diet. And obviously it's a little bit different because, we're here on Fight Island, but luckily enough, I did it with um, Alex Volkanovsky, who we also represent um, uh, with the first ever you know, uh, Fight Island event. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of natural at this now. It's like I never left the joint. And, um, <laughs> and I'm looking forward. I'm actually really looking forward to it. It's, it's um, creating history, you know, with the, with the four athletes on the one card. Um, well, for us anyway, I think uh, SGB. Um, or SBG, SBG, straight past yep. Jim. Uh, in, in Conor McGregor's uh, and Jim, I think they, they've done it before. Um, but yeah, it's, it's exciting. It's pretty, it's pretty massive, bro. Yeah. And so from yeah. your, your perspective, the guys have got weight cuts and there's obviously all the protocols with COVID and everything. Like it's a strange time. What, what do you What do you actually do during your time there? Like how hands-on are you in terms of like, uh, organizing and facilitating everything that goes on. Are you fully on the tools managing the boys, or can you sit back and enjoy the week? How did what what does that look like? Nah, we're on the tools. Yeah, we're on the tools hard. So pretty much, I'm a guy. That I'll, I'll go. I'll be. I'll be uh, doing the laundry. Everything from doing their laundry <laughs> to um, you know, get arranging the uh, PR and interviews and stuff like that. So pretty much just put myself where anywhere that I can help. Um, obviously, there's a lot of inbound uh, inbound uh, media. You know, we've got some some good activations with some sponsors that we've brought on for this fight camp. So, um, you know, a lot of a lot of logistics with just back and forth communication and just um, yeah. So, you know, you might be obviously where we are at the moment. We might be working with a brand in America, so you've got to work the funding times and and, and stuff like that. So, just kind of making sure the guys are comfortable. Um, you know, fight week. You know, if they want a spin bike in their room, we'll get them a spin bike in their room. If they want food at a certain time we'll arrange that you know ufc is really good they're the best fight promotion in the world um and they've got the great resources and you know to be honest with you where we are right now in fight islands it's the best treatment we've ever had yeah that's um, incredible <laughs> yeah like i mean like i just went before i jumped on here i looked at the menu and like i mean we're staying at the w hotel on yas islands it's got a the f1 track um around it and i'm looking out the window now at the at the, at the track and uh, so a couple of super yachts. So it's not, um, you know, with a, you know, it's, it's on or, or surrounded, obviously surrounded by water. So it must be an nice. inspiring place to be, bro. Yeah. Like you look, looking out there, looking at everything around you and what's built there and the magnitude of the events and everything. You must be like, you can't leave that without being super inspired for what's here here day. No, for sure. I mean, like it was actually funny you say that because with Alex, um, we, he, we, he fought mid July and um, it was just after COVID, like it was the first fights for us to come back. Uh, there, was, there were fights in, in America that were happening in, in, the, um, in Vegas, uh, but it was only for American athletes really, you couldn't get in and out. So, and it was through, I mean, we'd just come off a high with Israel fighting Romero, we're in Vegas, and that was literally the last card that was fought. Um, and then everything shut down. And, you know, like we'd been on the road for the last two years just traveling around and, and living this dream. And, and then it all just stopped. And, you know, like that, that kind of hit home for me personally. I know it had for another, other people. So you go through the weird tra- transition of like, 
everything just kind of stopping. And then obviously I've got a couple of other businesses and you're scrambling with that, not sure how, what the future holds. Mm. And um, yeah. And then obviously being able to come with Alex, fight Ireland. Like I've got, like, it honestly gave me a massive boost, like in, in just a reset. Like I came and then I used the, used my, my two weeks of quarantine to kind of just hammer work. Like I was, you know, I found that I'm really, really productive from like 10 p.m. through to like 2 a.m. Yeah. Because um, no one could bother me. <laughs> um, you know, but yeah, like I was, yeah, but no, like it's, um, it, it's, it's been really inspiring and um, kind of to be able to come and reset and then, you know, look at where you are and, and where you're headed. So it's good. Yeah. It's good. It's awesome, man. I'm, I'm personally pretty bloody excited. I've been counting this fight down for weeks eh, since it was announced. So I'm looking forward to it. But I keen to dive like right back to the start for those that aren't as familiar with the Engage story. Um, like I think it's personally one of the most phenomenal business stories and the combination between business and sport and the way that all you lads have managed to kind of all start the journey at the same time and then stick together, which is a big part of it. Where a lot of people fall apart when they build those teams early and then kind of all summit your own mountains and the same mountain at the same time. And I just think it's like, it's a pretty unique story, but people probably don't have a lot of background to it as well, bro. So just to give a bit of context to where you guys are at now, um, we, did you set out to start Engage? Like, how did it come about? I know that you were over in Thailand and you yeah. met a lot of those guys, but were you, from memory, I think you were doing like fly in, fly out work at the mines and you were yeah. over training in, in Phuket at Tiger and then sort of got those fellas. Like, when did you decide that Engage was going to become a thing? And like, can you talk us through a bit of that early journey? Yeah, definitely. Um, mate, I, I could never ima- have imagined to be in the position that I'm in right now. Um, you know, five, five, old, 2000, end of 2014, 15, um, when we started the I was, when I first went to Thailand. Um, look, uh, just, I guess, and talk about being inspired and stuff like that. I guess it was where in the birth of Engage or where it was, where how it was created was purely out of being inspired by, I guess, the life to train in the morning, jump on your bike and go to the beach, and, you know, watch the sunset and then train again at night. And it was, and, and you, you know, you're meeting people from all around the world from a lot of different walks of life. And, um, you know, I kind of really, before I went there, my life was like this, you know, I had the blinkers on. And then once I went there, it was like, everything was, you know, you, you see everything. Yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, like, I guess to give the backstory, yeah. About yeah, yeah, age, I mean, into it, um, yeah, I was kind of, I was kind of at a crossroads, I guess, where I, I went to, you know, in my life and a few things that happened, had happened previously. And then um, I went to Thailand with two mates that, that had been to been there and fought before. So it was, it was actually, I was lucky enough to walk in and meet guys like Andrew Wood, who was the strength, head strength and conditioning coach at the time for all the pro athletes at Tiger Muay Thai. Um, still is, sorry. And guys like George Hickman, who was actually an athlete at the time, but now is a head coach. And, uh, and his brother, Frank, who's the head wrestling coach. At Tiger. And then um, kind of meeting guys like Kai Car France, Brad Riddell, um, you know, and, and, a, and a bunch of other guys like uh, Shay Walsh and, and guys that you'll know, but obviously other people won't because their their careers did well, but they didn't do, you know, they're not, they're probably retired now. They're, they're in, in different um, promotions. Yeah. So, um, you know, like, yeah, just met the guys and, you know, started training myself and fell in love, had a fight myself and, and um, you know, beat up a, beat up a tuk-tuk driver and whatnot. But, um, <laughs> Uh, that's another story, but it, uh, it's, um, you know, it was, it was a great experience and something that I wanted to be a part of and try and kind of also, you know, I just, I guess I had a large ego. I always say that. Like I, I, I just didn't know what, what, um, I had this, the, the, the bubble of, a, like I had to engage and I had like a branding of engage. It was, I was meant to be a gym with a couple of other guys. And so I had the word engage and it was a fist and it was going to be this gym that never, never eventuated anything, but I, you know, I paid for the artwork. So, you know, I owned it. And, um, and then I was like, I remember sitting in a cafe with Kai and obviously getting to know everyone. I was back and forth there, like you said, you know, working and then coming back and for a good year yeah, and right. plus, you know, um, and then I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to start a fightwear brand. That was it. Like I sat in a cafe, I drew on a napkin with Kai. Um, 
and and a couple other guys. But um, Kai still still laughs about it today. And that was probably 2015. All right. And then obviously fast forward to where we are now. There's a lot in between, you know. Pretty much, I I guess I wanted to be a part of. I could see all the hard work and and the friendships that I'd had. And the old hard work, but sorry, all the hard work that the guys had put in, but then the friend, the bond, and the friendship that everyone had there. And then I was like, well, yeah, like I, I want to be a part of it, and I wanted to, I wanted to do something that was outside of like you know, I've always been, always thought I could do something bigger than just you know working in the mines or or you know working, you know, like in anything, you know, so. So did you yeah. have like when you when you were starting that when you when you sat there on the so- I was taking it it was a cafe on the soy, uh, and you, yeah, <laughs> you sat there. It was a cafe latte actually. Oh, good cafe. <laughs> good cafe, yeah. yeah. I frequented it for about a year, but um, mm. did you? So at that point you're like, I'm going to start engage. We this is what we're going to do. I take it at that point working in the mines, you had no skill set around marketing, sales, business no. <laughs> like that. Was your first endeavor? Yeah. So yeah, what's that? Like, what, what's what are some of like the key things that you come up against there early getting it off the ground? Because I take it there was a period of time where you were still t- yeah. working the mine, or you, and then you were trying to get it off yeah. the ground. What what was that startup phase like? Because it's fucking intense to have to learn the skill sets and to juggle the whole thing, um, particularly in a really com- like you know it's a pretty competitive space. Clothing. Clothing. Um, talk to us about that because there must have been some struggles there early on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, I was lucky enough to um, kind of, if I must say, like, it's just about relationships, right? Like, everything built is built off relationships. And I guess, you know, for myself, I'm, I'm, like, it's, it's all about, I guess, communication and relationships. So, first, I, I didn't have a clue what I was, what I was doing, you know. I, I went, right, I got back to, I remember getting back to Australia and just going, oh, fuck. <laughs> I've committed to this now, you know, I've got to, I've got to see it through. And then I'm, but one thing I did is I, I formed a great relationship with uh, Jeff Sandler, who was at the time um, a, a, a good fr- a friend, but then obviously I did all the marketing and, and um, social for Tiger Muay Thai. That's right. Yeah. So obviously um, we created a Facebook page, created, you know, uh, you know social media, Instagram, um, and then kind of built from there, but we're able to create content around the athletes. So before that, I actually went and made like 300 t-shirts at the, at the local, um, at the local screen printing shop shopping in, at the end of the story, gave them out through the, through the street. Yeah. I'm going to start a fight brand printed some printed a tank top, a t- cotton t-shirt, and like a, a, a sports t-shirt, um, polyester and just handed them out to everyone. Um, from like Thai massage ladies through to like, you know, local tuk-tuk drivers and to Muay Thai coaches. And even to this day, they're still, you know, st- I still get photos sent to me of the original T-shirts of, <laughs> yeah. with a Thai massage lady wearing one or something like that. And, um, yeah, so I did that and then started the Facebook page. We'd create, create content around the guys wearing the gear. But then when the guys would fight, we'd put our logo on another brand shorts. And um, that, was, that was, I guess, the, you know, the whole building of that, but then I started getting a lot of inbound emails and stuff like that from the Pakistan manufacturers. The dodge, you know, they're quite, um, you know, like, you. they're all yeah. agents. You know, it was, it was a massive, learning. yeah, it was a massive learning curve. Um, made a whole bunch of samples. Like I could go back to the archives and find like, you know, like crooked font across like old shin guards that were like, yeah, it's just yeah, it was. And it was obviously we started with a fist, and then that, that evolved to the E, and then that evolved to you know like some more design around the E, um, with the lines, um, but. Yeah, like, I mean, I didn't have, yeah, so, sorry if I just rambled, but I didn't have a clue what I was doing. And it took me a good, I'd say, we, we, see, we didn't end up going online until like November, I want to say no, October, November 2016. Right. Um, so we developed, it took us a good year and a half to develop the brand and the products. And even then when we went online, it was just a whole other world. So it was, it, it was I, it, at that point through that journey, are you, you've developed some of the product, you've got it to the guys, then you've started creating content with Jeff uh, around the athletes and you're still working in the mines doing all of that or what? what the situation? Yeah, like I was kind of like, by then I was, yeah, well by then like I was kind of back and forth. Like I, had, I worked in the mines for like three or four years um, and then as a, as a driller, I went to, went to uh, originally from Sydney, moved to 
Western Australia um, and then kind of work just to work in the mines and up staying there, a whole bunch of other mates, um, you know, work came over and worked there. And then I was doing a bit of sales stuff a lot locally in, in Perth and, and then also, you know, working as a concreter, <laughs> the boys would laugh at that, but try <laughs> pretend to work like a concreter. But, um, you know, like I, I you know, I was just kind of, um, you know, hustling, you know, doing what you could do in between. But, um, yeah, like, look, it took a long time to kind of develop the product. Um, even the marketing strategy, it was purely social media. Um, I didn't want to, I kind of was scared. I didn't want to, I'd heard all these things about marketing companies and like people just, you know, t- you obviously selling you a dream and not really performing. So we kind of did everything in house and, and really, uh, I put, brought, I actually, um, you know, had a mate at the time that was a screen printer, had a screen fam, family business screen printing company. So everything was, like I said, it's like relationships and, you, you know, like it's all about, about what you know. Yeah, you're you just know, getting, uh, getting in the you know, what you know. that done. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, then, yeah, we, we turned the website on in 2016. It was a WooCommerce website, which is the wrong platform. <laughs> um, <laughs> ended up causing us a lot of dramas. In, um, but we had that website for a year. You know, sold six, had six orders on the first day, um, all international, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all international orders. Um, and then, yeah, like kind of didn't get any sales for a few <laughs> for a while after, you know. Um, but yeah, like it was just the development of, of Engage has been, I guess, also a reflection of the development of myself. Totally. Right. Um, so yeah, I've, I've probably, you know, your bad times where you're like this and then you'll go down like, like it's times when you want to throw it in and then you'll, you'll get an email. Someone's interested to take the product on overseas or something like that. And it'll get you a boost back up and it'll, like, it'll just, it was like that for a good, really till like late in the, like to probably till the end of 2017, we switched over to Shopify conversions grew straight away and, um, bringing certain people on, uh, staff on and, 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 or like, you know, bringing on, um, you know, new people and you, you meet that, you know, really improve, improve the, the company, you know, so. When did yeah. you go full, when were you able to go full time into it? Cause we're what, 2020 now, when were you able to pay yourself a wage and actually get into it full time? To really pay myself a wage, like to go on and really pay myself a wage. Like I, you know, I was taking owner drawings there for a long time. I'm so like really to pay myself a wage. I only really did that last year, but that was like purely out of like, it just changed, changed, changed it. You know, like so 20, 2019, probably the start of 2019, you know, you know, but to, to be able to, um, it's all money in money out. Yeah. yeah. So like, like, you know, you just always, you know, and especially with when you create it, you've got to create a product, you've got to create the product. Well, actually you've got to design, create product. If you don't, if it's a new product, you've got to put the research development into it. And then from that, you'll manufacture a sample, you know, so there's costs involved to all that. Big overhead, so yeah. Yeah, and then, and then from then, then you'll sample, go into production, put your deposit down, um, you know, and then obviously start marketing, shoot the product, um, you know, come up with your, try, try and push it on, you know, to, to, your, to your buyers globally and whatnot. And then, You've, you know, you, you ship it, you, you know, it lands and it's, you release the product and then you've, you know, obviously, like I said, you've got your marketing campaign and your, you know, your influencers or whoever you want to use. Um, in saying that, I was probably really lucky to, be, to be have to have the relationship with the athletes because that's been a big part of the marketing campaign. Like yeah, is, I was about is, to say. That, that was the athletes. So, because eh? that's kind of been yeah, the core, was, you guys all being on the same team from the beginning. And mm-hmm. I guess the the timing of it's quite uncanny. It's not, it's like most brands are trying to get on board with established athletes. And when you're starting out, that's bloody hard because it's expensive. Yeah. You, you don't have the reach and the recognition that you need to be able to get on with the right guys. Uh, yeah. But the timing of all of you guys coming up together is like, that's what's fascinating and quite special about it because you've launched your yeah. company, got on with these boys early and done the right thing by them and their careers yeah. have all taken off and together you guys have just grown, but that's like pretty unique. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing, you know, like I, I can pretty much, it's exactly like if I break everything down, it's just like we met at a time where I guess it was like the building of it, 
and over like it's just it was the, the start of it and then everybody see everyone's careers have blossomed through it and but i think the reason part of the big reason as to why they have is because of the team that we have mm. like you know like whether it's eugene head coach eugene and and you could even talk to kai and brad like they were started off in thailand they ended up you know with eugene um you know like in like it's it's just because it, through their own development of in fighting and and, and their careers, you know, but then you, then you look like is, uh, Israel, you know, he's been with Eugene. Like every, everyone, like I guess city kickboxing and, and that gym has a great culture, but then obviously also engages that part of that community and part of that culture. And I think it's like engaged in city kickboxing that kind of really built that, you know, together, built that culture and built, we're able to, you know, really um, support the athletes through their journeys, but then also grow with them. You know, um, everyone that is a part of the brand is invested in the like. You know, is, is um, you know invested in the brand. Like, wants the brand to win. You know, wants the brand to succeed because they know that that obviously we've been there from the start. And you know, like it's you know even when the guys are, their careers are over, like they're still going to be a part of the brand. You know, like they're still totally. going to be. You know, I, I want to yeah. Like if they want to go and teach seminars around the world, engage will pay for that. You know what I mean? If they want to, I want to be able to like build keep that community and um if they want to roll inside the business or something like that, you know, like it's, it's a family community based brand that like has been there. Yeah. It's a vehicle grown. for all you yeah. guys like moving forward. That's the beauty. Yeah. Man, that's so cool. Yeah. And there's a lot, there's a lot of, you know, verticals from it as well. Like there's a lot, like, I mean, we've been gathering content and media since 2015 on the guys, <laughs> you know, so, you know, we've got a documentary of Israel that's coming out. That's like a massive feature documentary, um, film, filming around the world from, you know, every one of his fights in the UFC to before the UFC to, you know, Dubai and Nigeria and um, you name it. So yeah. and it's been, you know, it's been it's starting to really see the the fruits of the... Of the labour uh, over the last few years. The labour, so, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that, that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I remember, I think I banged you a message like a few years ago and it was like, I think it was after Izzy maybe won the first title or something and I just said congrats on Instagram and you wouldn't have even had a clue who I was. Some random dude reached out to you. But, nah. um, <laughs> but I was, you know, I followed Izzy. I, I, I mean, everyone says I've been a fan since day one, but I genuinely think I was at one of his first fights in Wellington when it was on Capital Punishment and he was like, he actually was dating a girl that I worked with in Wellington and um, <laughs> he was like, oh, she's like, I've got this I've got this boyfriend uh, up in Auckland and we're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then I think he came down and trained one weekend and we're like, oh, shit, no, she does have a boyfriend and he's quite big. And um, <laughs> and then he was fighting on Capital Punishment that weekend and I remember being like, shit, man, this guy's he's not normal. Like, he's there's something about him. There's an aura about him. There's a confidence about him. Even then when he was, like, a few fights deep and it was like, there was something that you just met him and you're like, shit, man, this guy's got something there. And um, yeah. And then I think like he showed obviously in the ring, but it was instantly from the first time watching him and stuff. I was like, man, it's out of the ring that this guy's got a sus. Like his head's in the right place. He's absolutely like incredibly intelligent. And, yeah. um, and it's like, it's fascinating to see it come full circle now to where he's literally the face of the UFC and all you guys have, have ridden that journey together. What's it yeah. like? What's it like? I mean, you and Izzy, you've got a pretty special relationship. I take it, but like, what's it been like? particularly fast forwarding straight through to when he won the title. Cause you've been a part of that journey from you've seen all the stuff behind the scenes, you know, what's gone into it. Yeah. Um, when, he, when he goes and wins that fight, yeah. what's that like, bro? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, if we, yeah, if you're asking me won the title in, in Atlanta versus um, <laughs> Gastelum, but yeah, I mean, if we've talked about Melbourne, just even like the, the setting, you know, 60,000, uh, three, three of the guys from City Kickboxing on the card. You know, Israel being the main event against Rob Whitaker, who's an Australian Kiwi. Um, and you know, like the, the the that alone is is was you know, like I remember after Brad's fight, I nearly like I was I nearly fainted. <laughs> like to be honest, with you, I was sitting cage side and I was just like, my my my, my missus just gave me like had was ch- running around chasing water and jelly beans because I was like shaking. Um, but um, that was an amazing, amazing night. You know, I was there, you know, I was there with like obviously Israel's family and, and um, you know, like 
it was it was being cage side and being able to like we we all believe that that you know that he would always be the champion. Obviously, um, you know that's I guess we've always believed in his ability and obviously being there being there by by his side from from the start of you know his UFC career and obviously even before that. But like to be there from the start of this, you look at the transition from kickboxing to MMA, and then also. Look at the start of his, when he when he debuted in Perth, through to like when they went to Scottsdale, then we main main event in Vegas, International Fight Week, went five rounds with uh, Brian Tavares and just you know took him one every round, <laughs> dominant, dominant, and then um, obviously then Silva, Gastelum, and um, and then Rob, then Rob, yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking they'll miss one there, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and then Rob, but like the growth that oh, I did, Bronson. So that was that, and Bronson, that's yeah. that was probably my favorite fight, Bronson. Bronson was well, they like, put him on the map big time. That's when he was really like taken seriously for the Madison like, by Square the mainstream. Garden. Yeah, Madison Square Garden. Um, you know, yeah, it was you know on. I think it was Cormier was the main main event. I, I want to say, um, you know, it was our you know big. There was big hype around it first time. What you know? What about when he fights a wrestler? Obviously, Eric was a wrestler, <laughs> um, and you know, like I mean, and obviously a, th- a few things that 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 in the preparation that that it, Bronson Bronson had said, you know, kind of really got under Israel's skin. Um, so you know, for him to come out and perform the way he did, and mind you, we we'd never had so much media that week. Like we were like the UFC. I guess we were a little bit green. Yeah, I might say because you know, obviously, going from like, firstly, like, and sponsor and managing, like, I'm learning on the hop as well, you know, like so, and obviously with, with you know, with Eugene, so, you know, we've got the UFC giving us, oh, you got to do this, oh, you got to do that. Like, we're going through walk, walks in the park with like, um, you know, during the day when he's meant to be resting, with like big camera crews and through through um, through uh, New York, uh, what's the Central um, Park, Central Park, sorry, yeah, like with you know, when, you know, and, and, and whatnot, like he's up from 8, 8 a.m. Th- through to, you know, 8 p.m. at night, like 12 hour days training and a media all day when you're meant to be cutting weight for him. And the growth that he had, I always say this to everyone, the growth that he, that I, that, like, that he had from the start of that fight to the finish of that fight, was like, a, a, you know, I think that really set him up for, like I always say, I, I watched him, you know, grow that week. It was pretty. It was pretty awesome. It was, it's one that I always look back on, and and that's you know, that amazing. That, point. And, and that, was... that and Mel and Melbourne. Melbourne was was crazy. You know, when beat Rob. Yeah, and what like in your opinion? Probably, being, I just yeah, being... actually, so like, I was I was very confident going to Rob, but you know, like that was you know that was for everyone else was quite, you know, I was quite very well very confident, you know, but yeah. Yeah, you must be all the time though. I mean, he, he's the sort of guy that no matter what, it seems like what sort of challenge you put in front of him, he just go, grows another leg and goes up. And it, it's like you get the better of Israel in every facet when he's under more pressure. That's what it seems like. Yeah, yeah. He surprises me. He even like, I don't know if, I, if he surprises me, but he does. Like he, he, obviously you're there and he's like, he'll have an interview and he's just, a you know, he's witty. He's very like he's very calculated, you know. Like he says, I'm, you know, I'm player one. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Of what you know, not to say he's he's definitely a different beast. You know, like he's he's just ten steps ahead, bro. He's like we we yeah. used to athletes not thinking for themselves in that sense, and like and yeah. you know, particularly in New Zealand, rugby players and stuff like that. And nothing against any of the rugby players, but like you're so managed and so trained and so one dimensional and they're, they're not really thinking about any of the bigger picture. Whereas Izzy seems to have come in with the full thing from the beginning, even the way that he's negotiated fights from the start when he entered the UFC, like there's nothing left to chance. He's across it. That's why, I, yeah. that's why he's on the wall behind me. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's yeah, like, see it. it's, that was actually taken at an engaged fight store in Melbourne. That one. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it's it's like it's that level of smart that I just think so special. And then all you guys jumping on that, what what is it for you that's if the, if you were to pick a characteristic with Izzy that is that separates him or that makes him so great? Obviously, he works hard. There's all that stuff, but like, is it the mindset? Like, what is it that stands out for you? I think it's his intelligence. It's his mindset. It's 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 definitely like he's. 
I think, yeah, I think it's definitely mindset. But I, I also to put his life experiences together to be able to use them to, you know, make himself better. I mean, mm-hmm. everyone goes through things and they think that, you know, like, and they do, they change you and they, they improve you. But he really understands who he is mm-hmm. and he uses that and his, his development and his ups and downs through his life. And, and he's had a lot um, to really make himself a better person. And I think that instead of like, there's been times, I guess, where he's, instead of people can sit on, sit back and, and, and complain or whinge about certain things and, and let it affect them, or you can decide to, to, you know, take it as a challenge or look at to better and improve yourself or use it against the, whatever it is that's, mm. that's, you know, um, you know, that's, that's in the way at the time. Uh, I really think that it's, he's, he, number one, he truly really understands himself and to his intelligence to be able to use his life experiences to, you know, create what he has done. I yeah, think he, that, that's probably. So thanks. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. I mean, he, he, he understands, he seems very self-aware, but just understanding that like mm. your adversity is your advantage, just everything that happens along the way. It's like, if you could write a script for how you deal with things, he seems to tick it every single time, which is amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. what are some of like what about Eugene and guys like that, bro? Because you guys have all worked together. Yeah. Like you were saying, one thing that I found really fascinating that you were saying before was the culture and kind of the crossover between CKB and the community side of um, engage and like what you guys are trying to create is kind of the same thing. That's just what it's about. It's about community. What yeah, they've obviously got an incredible culture. Uh, I take it that's led by Eugene. Um, uh, what is it about CKB? that has enabled them to create success and repeat success because it's normal for, you know, some guys will create a champion and, you know, Jim, Jim's yeah. success, but what they are creating is, is quite different again, man. They're doing it on a whole nother scale. You've got guys like Brad and Kai and that who are yeah. still early in their careers, yeah. but have championship credentials undoubtedly. Uh, what, what's special about oh, and, and what are some of the key Even learnings that. that you guys have, um, I guess, taken from each other to help grow, engage and to grow CKB? I think, like, I guess my my relationship with Eugene is 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 a, is a you know really kind of it's probably one of the best relationships I have with the team. Like, it's it's right. um, and that's I think that's how we've been able to you know kind of grow and build the team um, in cert in a certain way. I think that like obviously um, he is very methodical and very um, you know you know he studied law. You know, so he, he, you know, yeah, he studied law. He never, he never finished. He chose to fight instead, but he did two years in law. Um, he's quite intelligent, whereas I'm very much like, you know, like I said, I, I guess I had a large, a large ego when I started engaged. I'm very like, um, uh, you know, gun ho and, and, um, yeah, like, I guess, yeah, like I'm a doer, you know, I, I think I like to think, you know, so I think our, when we mash together, we make a good, a good team. Yeah, right. So that's where we've been able to, and we both genuinely care. Um, but then to, so that's the kind of answer that I guess the relationship between CKB and engage, and then that's how it's, it's blossomed. But then the culture inside, um, city kickboxing is, is one that's instilled by us from respect. Um, it's, 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 and hard work and like, and also everyone's equal. I mean, it doesn't matter if you are Israel or Sanya and, or you've just started in the gym, everyone's treated the same. Yep. And I think that, and it start and it starts from there. Um, you know, it's, 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 you know, almost like the school of hard knocks, you know, if you're in that gym and you're, you're inappropriate or you, you know, it, you'll find out and it won't be, <laughs> it won't be from, you know, it'll be the hard way. Um, and, and it instills respect and, you know, and, and um, I guess that's where it's all kind of, it all starts, but it's also like, you know, for a lot of years, you know, like in, in the in the combat industry, and only now, you know, like yeah, it's been ten years of work between that Israel and Eugene have put in together in coaching, and then obviously extended coaching staff. But that's to get Israel to where he is today. That's ten years of like consistency yeah. and and like you know traveling the world, ups and downs, to get into where it is to where they are now. You know, it wasn't an overnight thing and. The culture has been built over those years, um, and 
you know, I think that it's, you know, everyone's there for each other. It's that fighting can very much be an individual sport, but that is not the case at city kickboxing. It's, it's a team effort. Yeah. Even now, like there's, there's 13 guys that just landed on a plane that have just like lived and trained together through in the gym through COVID. I mean, I don't want to, like, I just can't see a guy like that there walking into a cage, knowing that you've got the support of, of that, like that bond. Like yeah. It's almost having like, you know, if you've played sports, the team sports and knowing that you can rely on the person next to you. These guys were living and breathing it in the gym, sleeping on the mats in the gym through, you know, it really kind of talk about like, this is the peak of, of you know, like I think you're really going to see some great performances on the weekend. Yeah, and, um, that that lockdown is a blessing in disguise, there. Eh? Because when I saw that they all locked down oh, together, yeah. when that happened, I was like, man, that's gonna be, <laughs> that's dangerous to be coming up against any of those guys. Because it's it'll be the I've heard them say it, but you you're living it. It's like the bonds that you get, the excitement that you get. You're just like that would be the best fight camp that you could possibly have. And they all hop on a plane, flying over here. Yeah, it's the biggest yeah. weekend. Like, man, it's it's the stage is set perfectly, you know. Yeah, yeah, nah, a hundred percent. It's it's um, like like it's going to be a fun week. <laughs> yeah. Put it that way. There's what, plenty of banter. There's plenty of you know um, the good times, and I don't think anyone's everyone cops a little bit of uh, stick. You know whether you know you know, and it's a good mix. You know, we've got Americans in camp, we've got Kiwis, Aussies, you know, Romanian um, head coach, you know, wrestling coach. You know, it's a it's a it's a good team. You know, it's a good mix, and and um. It's exciting. This is the best part of what we do. Yeah. What good. are you most proud of, bro? I don't know. <laughs> Probably <laughs> the guys. Like, I, I, I'm like, I'm very proud of like what the guys have achieved and what like you know. I don't think that everything's kind of truly sunk in. Just living it. Ever. I don't know if it ever really will. Um, but yeah, like I think like you gotta. Sometimes, you know, it's like everyone, you know, and it doesn't matter how successful you are, you still, I think everyone still has that drive. Anyone in our industry, you know, you always want to be better or do, you know, even though we've, we've accomplished things that I never thought we would and, you know, but we've still got a lot of growth to have. Like Engage has got a lot of growth. So I think mm-hmm. like what am I most proud of? I'm most proud of the, of the athletes like of their, of what, and of what they've, they've achieved. I think with Engage, I always want to improve and always want to do better um am i proud of where we are now yeah but like i think that like there's you know we're just a you know i don't want to like engage will be the biggest sportswear brand from australia come out of australasia in yeah. the last 10 to 15 years like we're and i don't mean that that in a any bad way you know arrogant way but i mean uh, no it just it um, just is like I mean, it, the, the growth a, of engage yeah, it's factual massive, like mate. it's where we are yeah we're projected to to yeah and the, what we're projected to do in the coming years and and the, and the, the we're, like our biggest market currently is is is, is we're, we're now in north america we're bigger we're still you know than than australasia and all our athletes are you know obviously based in in australia and new zealand and but like we we you know consistently sell more product online and now opening distribution and and stuff like that in north america so, so yeah, you're, cra- you're cracking into the American market. Like that's kind of ha- obviously happening on the growth of those guys over the last year. But what's yeah. the sort of split between like just out of interest? Obviously, I take it early on New Zealand, Australia was a large percentage yeah. of sales, and now you're yeah. starting to see that flip around. Like, is it starting to take over? Yeah, no, from, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, you know, I think our biggest our biggest market would be North America. Right. Okay right now like on par with australia new zealand like it's probably some months it's more some some months like but if you looked at like internationally compared to australia like it's probably you know a good 70 to 60 percent international sales yeah right you know and so, so just looping back around to what you said earlier because you said you started with 300 t's and you got six orders on your first yeah. thing i mean what sort of numbers do you put out uh, like not financially but in terms of sales like a week what's a week or a month on average now yeah, like, look, we're in the thousands, you know, like, a, like you know, like a daily we're, we're, you know, we're doing over 100 units, like, yeah. you know, or new, no, sorry, we're doing 100 orders, yeah. um, you know, well, well into the hundreds, you know, so, um, 
yeah, like, I mean, it depends on, you know, consistency, yeah? Like, I mean, you could go through COVID. Where we wanted to be by the end of the year isn't going to happen because of, because of COVID. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, oh, we're, so, we're strictly online at the moment. When I'm talking internationally, like, we do have some wholesalers and distribution set up, like, in New Zealand, in, inside Australia, but and, and some pockets globally, like, in, yeah. in America and the UK and stuff like that, but, and Japan, actually. But dominantly, we are online, and that's direct-to-consumer. Um, and that's kind of worked for us. And only now we're really starting to really open up, but like, like that and really push in, but I think it's got to be gradual. Like I'm having a meeting with, with, um, some businessmen here in, in Dubai after, after this, you know, that are interested in the, you know, distribution of engaged in, in the UAE and I've had chats with, uh, we're doing that. We're actually opening our gates in, um, in, in have a setting up distribution in New Zealand. So we'll have nice. like, um, a three PL, a distribution outlet in, in New Zealand. So it'll be like next day shipping and cheaper prices for New Zealand customers. Um, you know, America is obviously a big market, but you really want to hit the ground running there. You don't really want to. So we're building, building to that. We've had a lot of interest in Tahiti. So in Tahiti, um, obviously just mentioned Japan. So it's, it's a happening. Like there's, you know, we're for, like you said, from, from, you know, we're a multi-million dollar company. Yeah. Um, I'll put it that way, you know, yeah. so we're, you know, we're doing well, um, but there's still a lot of room to grow. And so um, what, what's the goals for you? Like say next five years, like where do you, do you have, cause it started and you were like, I couldn't ever imagine getting to here, but now you're, yeah. living it. now you're living it. What does it look like in five years to you? Like, do you set goals? How do you approach the business? Yeah, yeah definitely. Like, I mean, I guess I've never really looked at an out, which I know a lot, a lot, do, a lot of people, I'm just so passionate about what we do. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll, we'll definitely look at in the next five years, we'll probably would have brought some smart money on with investors, yeah. but it really has to be the right, right fit. Um, we've, we've, you know, I've, I've, I guess we would just, we were, like, we were probably, you know, a couple of years off the, the UFC deal. Like we were in the last engagers in the last four brands, um, that pitched for that actually were approached by the UFC to, to put together a proposal for the athlete outfitting for Fantastic. 2021 and extended uh, to Puma just, uh, sorry, uh, Venom, Venom just got the deal. Um, so, I mean, you know, like, you know, the feedback there was, that was great. Really. They said, you've got the best, we had, they said we had the best proposal and you know, the best um, products, you know, that we sent over, but we just didn't have the runs on the board globally to be able to facilitate it. And I totally understand that. Like it would have just been a total, you know, I would have had to bring in money, like investors. And it was like a, it's actually something really exciting, something I've learned a lot from. Mm. So, I mean, in the next five years, I guess there's probably a partnership with the UFC, possibly. If not, then, you know, that doesn't define us. Um, but I think that would be pretty cool because yeah. we, we already aligned with so many of the, you know, we're a community-based brand. We already sponsor a lot of the athletes. Um, and we've got yeah. the best gear out there, <laughs> yeah. if I must say. Um, yeah. You know, like from, from where, you know, we really want to change. I think with Engage, we really want to, in the next five years, we really want to change the way fight gears looked at. You know, we want to be that kind of crossover between streetwear and fightwear and be able to, you know, really be a sportswear brand yeah. in the next five years yeah. and not just, I guess, sell fight shorts and gloves. Yeah. Um, you know, so, yeah, I think like in the next five years, I think we'll have, you know, We'll, we'll, we'll be, we'll, I think, you know, like I really want to be set up in America, which is obviously going to happen. Uh, hopefully you know, on my books, I want that to be this time next, by this time next year. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, we're planning and stepping, stepping, stepping forward. You know, there's, there's really no limit to what we can achieve. You know, like we, we kind of, at least want to be one of our best months ever and we're going through COVID, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. so that shows you the, the growth that you can have even in, with econ business, even in the down times, I mean, we've just invested heavily in, 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 in a lot of stock for, for 20, you know, um, some in Q4, but then some, you know, Q1 next year, majority of it. And, you know, like we're, it's, yeah, there's really no limit to what we can achieve. So yeah, it's no. exciting. It's one of those things. I mean, for a guy who says you've got a big, you're incredibly humble. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, like, well, yeah, I guess, like, I just was like, oh, I'm going to start a fight with brain. I didn't even have a clue what to do. So I guess, like, it's, entrep it's entrepreneurship, though, isn't it? Always, yeah, 
Yeah, but I think like I just always knew that I could I could achieve it. Like yeah. it was like, you know, from from getting ripped off, you know, I remember it was massive for us. And it was just all like I'd made one order with a with a manufacturer previously and then just because I'd made that order and everything well it went well, I threw all the procedures out, out of the window, made it, didn't sample it, didn't do anything, came in, it was absolutely terrible. You know what I mean? But now like, you know, like and that was a waste of twenty K, you know, yeah. and that was like nearly I was ready to throw it I was ready to throw it in. Like I was yeah. like done. But then, you know, what kept us going was obviously the, the athletes and not letting them down. What are a couple of the key kind of lessons, I guess, that if you could give yourself a bit, couple of bits of advice looking back on it, what would a couple of the top bits of advice be to a younger Ash? Because there's a lot of people out there entering those types of markets at the moment. Obviously, entrepreneurship's fashionable, uh, particularly the clothing space. Um, what, yeah. based, based on your personal journey, not with Izzy and any of the other guys, from what you've learned on your personal journey, what would a couple of bits of advice be? I guess like a couple of bits of advice would be to obviously stay consistent. I think consistency is, is, is something that, you know, I still struggle with. Um, you know, like it's, but if you can stay consistent, then I think you'll, you, you know, like it's a, and it's a slow burn, but if you can stay consistent, then you will make a lot of, uh, you know, headway and a lot of uh, development improvement. Um, it's just a fact, but I think, I think, um, Always learn at least 50% of every single aspect of your business. I think that's a key one that I, I guess I've, I like to think that I've done. Mm. Uh, like, you know, at least 70, 50 to 75% of every single aspect of your business. So then you know, you know, like that. How to manage, how to outsource, yeah, how to run those uh, Yeah, like everything from pick, pick, pick pack marketing, email marketing to, you know, I think at the start, you know, I'd hire, you know, I've got great, great staff. Um, and they've been from me. Some have been from me with me from the start, um, and but they've learned along the way. Um, so, I guess the key thing is to learn. Yeah, it, I, I guess that's a, probably the biggest one is to learn fifty to seventy five percent of what you act, what your business actually. You now you can only really be good at one or two things, yeah, inside your business. Like one, one mine's like communication, and I, I, I guess like you know, um, I like to think it's you know like a relationships and communication, you know, and think like I can really, I'm really good at doing this talking, but yeah. you know, being able to then make sure that I action, everything, follow it up. You know, that's, yeah. you know, everyone has like a different aspects of, of what they really good at. I think you focus on that on what you're really good at, but then learn 50 to 75% of everything else. And, mm. you know, like in that note, that way, you know, you, you know, you, you, you can't really be, led down the wrong street, if you know. Yeah, I think that's really good advice because I think a lot of the time, um, well, you just, you just can't effectively manage a team early on if you don't understand the different departments and what you're looking yeah. for and what, how do you, you know, like on a marketing perspective, if you don't know, understand it to a certain level, then you can't hire and you can't manage because you don't know what the yeah. expectations are or what's good or bad. Yeah. So that's really good advice. What about, and what's your relationship with failure, bro? Because like, even, you know, you guys are constantly, la you launch new, um, like new SKUs and new products all the time. And you're constantly, although the business is established, you're constantly playing and trying new stuff. You've just done a new collab I've seen. Um, what's yeah. your relationship with failure? Are you still pretty gung-ho and like just willing to have a crack at stuff? Do you, are you, now that it's got somewhere, are you more fearful of failing with things like that? Like what's your relationship with failure? Yeah, I mean, nah, I don't really like that. That's that. I think that's, I'm still gun ho but I'm probably a little bit more affected by the numbers. You know, like now, like, I guess, like, you know, you really want to, if, you know, if you're used to doing a certain amount a month and you've got, and then you don't hit it, you want to know why and break everything down or you, you like, you really, um, it can affect you, you know, like it does, you know, and sometimes and everyone needs a good pep talk, like mm. whether it's your partner, you know, you, you, you know, or your, some, one of your, one of your employees, you know, um, you know, I think that, for me, it's, it's, yeah, I guess like you can't, like I, I, I'm not, I guess built like that. You know, I don't, I, I believe that I can achieve. Yeah. You're you an optimist I mean? and you've got self-belief. Be yeah. So I think that like, and if it doesn't, I'll always try and find a positive, even if it doesn't work, you know? Um, but you know, and it, it, you do, I think that's the best way to be. I mean, 
one thing I've learned recently is that, you know, you can, which, you, which can probably counter a lot of, uh, you know, a little bit of what uh, I've, I've, I've just said with, with, um, you know, learning 50 to 75% of your business is, or actually really support it is that you can't do everything. You know, you can't, you know, and, and inside my business, I think we've been able to really grow engaged to where it is today. But now the next steps of where, what I'm learning currently is that you need to really, you know, go to your, your big marketing agencies or um, PR companies or, or, you know, like, the, the, and then you can really kind of um, accelerate every, faster. Not, right? Yeah. Accelerate more and, not because I guess we've 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 done everything in house ourselves and really grown and engaged to where it is today and it's to be commended. But now we're really starting to flick the switch and going into a really new phase. bring the bring yeah bring the bigger companies on that that can support and prop prop us up. But also then you can keep them you know accountable, set the KPIs yes. and you know like if they say they can if they say they can you know if they say they can do something then you can hold them accountable you know and it's so you know I think outsourcing you know is a big thing and I think. I guess you can put that down to failure as well. You know, if you are failing at something, don't be, you know, be scared to outsource it, you know? Yeah, yeah so, totally. Yeah. What about, um, what about some of the best pumps, bro? Like I know that you sort of referenced a couple of the key moments that you yeah. were, were iconic and, and key turning points for Israel's career, but like just along the journey, there's been so many good times. Are there, are there any that stand out? Like when you're, when you go out and you've you've won like a title as a team, or you've just it might it may, might not even be title nights, but like you know you're in yeah. Vegas, you must have had some pretty loose times as well. You must have partied with some pretty good <laughs> cool people and had a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> no comment. Yeah, um, <laughs> come nah, on, look, mate. Um, yeah, look, yeah, yeah, it's been an amazing ride. It's um, it's been absolutely like amazing, and it's surreal. Like, but it's the norm. It's normal. Like, as much as I don't want to sound arrogant, but it's normal. Now, so I mean, like you can, you can, like I guess, look at the life that I'm living is normal to me. Yeah. Like so, I mean, it's it's, but it's it's a it's amazing, and I'm very 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 lucky, and and but I also put it down to the work and the hard work that we've done previously, um, and and I feel very honoured and fortunate to be a part of this team, but I also know the sacrifice and the work that everyone in this team's put in to be where we are today, um. So the best, some of the best times I've had, um, you know, I, I really, you know, is it more, it's a more like obviously when Israel won the belt in Melbourne, but also like to watch him grow. And I think New York was a great trip, USC 230. Um, and like, I guess like, you know, Alex Rokhanovsky, you know, like winning the belt, that, that was, yeah, you know, that was that, massive, that, we all knew that was massive, man. Like that, you know, that was for me, one of the best moments that I've had, you know, because we all knew that yeah. we, he was the biggest, no, he wasn't meant to win. He was the biggest underdog, but we, I mean, you can ask, ask guys like everyone was like, Alex will be your first champ. Ever anyone that knew right. like, or that was in like, whether, whether it was your George, George Hickman or yeah. anyone, they're like, Alex will be your first champ. Really? You know what was I mean? that? Just what was it about him? that They've trained, they've trained with him. He's a hard, mate. He's a hard worker. You so saw skill him, and like, hard work. Yeah. Hard, skill, hard work. Like you look at, yeah, he's, he's a, you know, like obviously great team around him, you know, with, with Joe. Um, and then also for him to be able, and then, you know, like for them to be able to go, right, we want to improve even more. And obviously, um, you know, Brad's is Brad Riddell, like who, Brad Riddell currently I believe is the best lightweight in Australasia. And I believe that he will, he will, mate, he will be top five, you know, within the next year. Couldn't agree more. Year or two, depending yeah, on how quickly the UFC, the UFC want, depending on how the UFC want to push him. You know what I mean? Um, some of the best, some of the best, it's the little things. It's the little things as well. It's just like the small moments of like, even now, like the guys have just landed, like everyone's going to be together and, you know, like it's, yeah, it's a, it's a little things, you know, like it's, it's the, the small accomplishment, accomplishments, accomplishments that, um, you know, even in the, in, in, with Engage, you know, it's like, like little, this little wins, you know, like it, it's, that's what it's about. It's the 10%. It's the, it's the small wins that keep you going. It's, yeah, the, 10%. it's, the, it's the journey. Yeah. Like you're, you're yeah, loving the yeah. journey. And yeah. I, 
I guess from the outside looking in, it's like you see all the good times. Like yeah. this weekend, you fly in, and and what you see on social is, um, is going to be around the event and and uh, all the good stuff. But behind the scenes, there's just so much going on. But because you're all yeah. mates and because you've all come up together, it is it's yeah. genuinely the journey. And I think that's a big part of the success of it as well. Is that you know guys like Gary V and anyone who's got some influence in, in the entrepreneurial space will say when you can fall in love with the journey, you're going to do ten times better, right? Like that's that's yeah. when, like you said, I've got no no desire to sell out to get rid of engage yeah. and to move on i don't have an exit plan and that's fucking powerful man like how do you how do you rival a guy like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no it's, it's it's amazing yeah uh, i appreciate it look like yeah like i like i said like i'm also i'm honored to be a part of this team and be have to you know like it's something that hopefully you know when i'm when, when we're not around anymore it's something that we we'll still live on yeah. um and bear, you know, like, and, and I think that, you know, like the, the success of Engage and the success of the, got the athletes' careers all built off of the team that we have and the camaraderie and everything that we have. And that's, that's where it starts, you know, that's where what, it starts. What about, like, like, you're obviously, like, you, you, you're passionate about MMA. You've had a passion for MMA prior to starting it. That's where it led you to Thailand to, to do that stuff. But, like, what's your advice, I guess, Heaps of people out there, man, are just sitting around in jobs that they hate and just kind of drifting through and like not not pursuing anything. And then you're at the complete opposite end of the spectrum where you've just like chased your passion. Do you believe that that's like a fundamental thing of like living a happy, happy life, life is to go out, do what you're passionate about, have a crack at that type of thing? I'm assuming that that's your advice around that side of things. Yeah, look, like I believe that like everyone's, you know, you drilled into being, I guess, yeah. Uh, people get complacent, you know, like you, you get, you believe, and you, you believe what you're fed. You mm. know what I mean? Totally. Um, and I believe, I, like I, I guess that when I talk about my ego, I've always believed that I could do something yeah. better, you know, like, or, or could be something. Yeah. I remember looking in the mirror when I was 10 or whatever, like I'm thinking like what I'd be like when I was 30. Yeah. Like I always had that ambition. Like I genuinely can be- remember uh, thinking what I'm going to look like, what am I, going to be doing like you know am i gonna you know like i never always always just saw success like when i was i mean when i was bloody still 17 up on crutches with my acl i thought i was still going to be a rugby league superstar yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. you just you you know like it's just how you know like my, how my head's always been been driven did you have um, times where that was that where that was like a massive challenge as well where because you had that inside you but you hadn't necessarily found yeah. the the thing that you were going to apply it to where it yeah. was difficult. Yeah, you definitely have your flat spots. I mean, everyone does. Like I said, like you still, like I, you know, like I hit a, personally, I hit a like massive, massive wall. Like after, you know, after the two years of like, you can, like I say two years, but like from pretty much from 2018, we hit the ground running. But yeah. you go back, but like, you know, I it was, it was, it was crazy traveling around the world doing what we did and then it all just stopped. Mm-hmm. You know, I hit a massive person made a massive brick wall and like you don't, you know, like even though I had so much good in my life, you know, like you, you still have things you need to go through and grow from. Um, but I guess to answer your question previously, I guess like um, you have, yeah, like what's, there's no point, there's no, there's no harm in trying, you know what I mean? And giving things a crack, you know, and there's, look, I still get like, don't get me wrong. Like I've been in meetings with, with, <laughs> With, you know, like I, I, you know, I dropped out of school when I was 15. Might have even been asked to leave. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't your A grade student. Like, and I, this is why I really truly believe, like if you can apply yourself to anything that you want to do, you can do it. Mm-hmm. It's all just my, it is, it is mindset and belief, totally. but, and obviously you got to have your luck and you got to have your wins, but you also create it. And I think that like, you know, if you just be a good, if you if you if you be if you're a good person, good things will happen. You know, it's yeah. the energy thing. Like if you if you stay committed, you you know you you treat people well, and you're a good you know you good person comes from a good place, and that's what you'll attract. And I think if you can use that in a way through through business, you know, to to do the right thing by people and to to grow, that will then create something special. I believe. Mm. You know, I'm, I totally agree. I guess, I think well, I'm a good example of that. And yeah, I think that 
yeah, like I, I, there's nothing. If you want to go do something, do it. There's no no one can stop you from doing what you want to do. Only you. Like if if you want to do something, do it. Yeah. If someone tells you no, do it anyway. Like do it. Because who are they to tell you what to do? Yeah. I mean, totally, bro. that's that. I'm a big believer of that. Like there's always a way, and and there's all like you can get it done. Yeah. 100% couldn't agree with it more and I, probably the other thing to add to that is the in, environment you know like you talk about energy um, and you know you t- people talk about being the average of the five people you spend the most time around from a financial perspective but from a happiness perspective from a fitness perspective yeah. from the, the circles you keep are who you become man and I think that's probably one of the things that I admire about all you guys and the yeah. way that you've risen is that it is that energy bro there is such a good energy in that group and it's like it's hard to to, it would be impossible. To, I would not want to come in and fight that, you know, from a business perspective, from a yeah. from an athlete perspective, yeah. because the energy is so good. You guys are riding it so well. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it is what you attract. Like, I mean, like I personally, like I'm I, before I was all like, you know, I never had time for like any relationships. And you're outside the work life. You know, we'll all come together. You know, I've, I've met beautiful woman, a uh, beautiful woman. You know, and she's changed my life as well. You know, but I definitely wouldn't have met her if I didn't have the energy and, and everything that around me, you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's, totally. I can, I can honestly put that down to like a, a bunch of different things that have happened in my life, but changes made by changes, changes that I've made in my life, you know, by, you know, and it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing. How do, how do you keep yourself grounded and, and sort of going, but do you have like a root, a bit of a, a routine? You're, you're obviously busy. You've got three, four businesses on the go at once. You're managing top athletes. Um, how, how do you stay grounded and how do you fucking keep it all together? <laughs> no worry. I've got some people who keep me pretty grounded, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it looks, are you a routine guy though? Like, do you have like a routine that you follow or your structure or are you off the charts, not structured? Like, is there certain yeah, things that keep guess, you going? Yeah. Yeah, there are. I guess like, cons- like I said, like I still struggle with consistency and there is like, I, I guess I am manic. I mean, like, I guess, like, my the verticals I have around me really show that. I mean, I, I've been I, I, starting up. I was like, oh, that's a great idea, you know. Boom, let's look at doing that, you know. Um, but I guess, like, yeah, I, 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 the older I get, and the more experienced as a businessman, I really, you know, um, started to, to implement the the correct, um, I guess. Um, protocols or like consistency you know like i mean like having a list striking it off you know like someone said to me the other day like someone that i really network with a lot um a good mate he's like you know because i was talking yeah you know, i use like i use a task you know like uh, something online and he's like for him he, he uses a book still pad and pen because there's no better feeling than just crossing it out once you've done it yeah um you know so if everyone's everyone's different I, i've you know you know i, I like to it's always so much going on that like I might I'll have it, my set list of what I would need to do, but then I'll have a phone call and then that phone call will spiral into like, right, you've got to do this. <laughs> so you'll never, you won't get, you won't get to that list or the back end of that list, you know? Yeah. So I think that they've, you've got to kind of take it of what's important to you yeah. or to, to what's important to the company or that, you know? So, I mean, yeah, I am quite manic and anyone that knows me will think that, you know, we'll, we'll back that up. Um, <laughs> But we always we always get we always get it done. Yeah, and have you have you had mentors and stuff? Or is that something that you believe in in terms of from like a business environment? Obviously, being around the athletes, every athlete's got a coach and a and a guys that they're learning from, and and a mentorship's a huge part of being an athlete. Does that apply to you in business as well? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like I think um, in life experiences, like I guess, like you know, I've been able to kind of get myself to work to a certain point, um, and and you know, through, from life experiences and challenges that I've had in my life, um, that I've, I've worked through and been able to change, you know, certain aspects and certain things in my life that I've done. But then also you need that help, like whether it's talking to a, talking to a, um, you know, a shrink or whether it's like, you know, um, talking to your partner or just exercise, you know, like, uh, yeah, there's a lot of different elements as to like having that about a mentor. I mean, I think you can, you can definitely put it down to general health as well, but, um, I, I like to think that, yeah, I do. I, I have like a couple of people I talk to, um, yeah. and that are in this game, in this industry. And, and, um, you know, like it's, I think it's, 
you can learn so much from, you know, from everyone and anyone. Like it's not about like, you know, like I've learned a lot from, from a really good friend, Xavier. I've learned a lot from some of my staff, yeah. um, you know, like, you know, like, uh, and you know, like Xavier's 28, I'm 33. I've learned a lot from him. Like he's, yeah. a, and he's a, an amazing, amazing it in his, in what he does. Uh, he has got a, a clothing brand, um, called Saint CC, yeah. which is the denim brand. He's done really well. Um, and you know, someone I, I actually look up to, um, you know, so I mean, like, and you can learn from so many different. You know, like I said, my staff. You know, I've learned a lot from them. Um, you know, it's about having the attitude. You've got to hire people again. Right. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to, you know, and and even, yeah. So I think, without rambling on too much, yeah, there's definitely people in my life that you know, even, you know, your partner, like you know, you can take like a look at like you know, Mel, my partner. I've learned a lot from her. She said, you know, change certain things. Um, you know, let me see certain things. Sorry. Yep. change certain things <laughs> everyone will be like yeah most women do that but no, like, yeah definitely definitely like you know help open your eyes to certain things of you know how you are and communication or like, i think there's, there's a lot of different things that can help if you're open to um listening yeah no i, I think it's come through a lot and what you've said is like and, and it's the ability to have an attitude where you if you identify someone as a learner you're constantly evolving constantly growing whereas if you yeah. think you know it or you're not open to that then you're you're going to stay where you are forever, you know? And <laughs> yeah, yeah. 100%. Like that, there's a lot of crossovers there between professional athletes and business. I think, you know, it's a, there's a reason a lot of professional athletes go so well when they transition into business is because all those core principles are the same, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, hey, for look, sure. for it's, sure. just in closing, I mean, the, the goal of the podcast is, um, it's called Life Livers Academy and it's just trying to talk to real people who are out there doing real things and get, you know, the inspiration and mindsets and ideas to go out there and just make the most of your life because, I feel like a lot of the time we just drift through it and it's really easy to fall into patterns where you, you are just drifting or, you know, you get knocked about a bit and, um, and you lose confidence and you stop dreaming and you stop striving for some of the bigger stuff. And so I like talking to people like you, uh, because you have walked it, you know, you've done it, you're out there, you're a living example of it. And what you were saying before about, you know, anyone can yeah. achieve it. Well, you and Israel and Brad and the whole crew have proven that because over the last five years, you've gone from being at the start of the journey to where you are now. And the journey's not by no means done. I guess any closing thoughts for people, um, you know, whether it's someone out, out there stuck or just lessons that you've learned over your thing that you think are worth passing on um, just to close off. Believe in yourself and your ability to be able to achieve whatever it is that you want to be able to achieve. Mm. I think, you know, I think some, for some people that comes naturally, but for others, I think that there's a, probably a lot of people with a lot of head noise um, that really, you know, you know, probably overthink certain things or think that they can't do things. But, you know, it's all mindset and everyone, you know, everyone's beautiful in their own way and can achieve things and, and, and do a lot of things, you know. There's a lot of great in people and mm. you just got to kind of find it within yourself and believe in yourself to be able to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. Yeah. I love it. Man. Hey, just want to acknowledge you and say thanks for your time, bro. I know that you're super busy and uh, I've been hounding you to try and get you online for a while. So <laughs> I appreciate no, no, it's all good. I appreciate you giving up no. your time and um, yeah. I just want to wish you guys all the best, you know, obviously over the next few days. And I hope that the weekend's a huge success for engage and for all the guys, but uh, I know that you guys are 50% of the way into the journey, man. There's a big future ahead for all of you. And it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I just want to say thanks because it's it's really fucking inspiring, man. There's a reason I've got Izzy on the wall behind me uh, because I look at it yeah. when I'm having a tough time or whatever and it reminds me of what can be done and uh, you guys are all living proof of that, bro. So thanks for your time and, and thanks for the chat and I just wish you all the best moving forward. Thank you very much, mate. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, sorry if I've rambled on too much. I guess I, can't, I haven't really done too many of these podcast before so sorry if i um if i if i've been a bit uh, a bit too uh i guess crazy with, with what, I, what I, you know where i was no. going with it all but no, i really appreciate it it's been good bro it's been great